Hey guys, here are 5 quick tips for asset texturing in Instamat. Number 1. How to simulate orthographic view. Also there is no dedicated button for orthographic view in Instamat. We can easily simulate it by going to the viewport settings here. Then changing the field of view to 10. And that's basically it. Actually it might be easier to see it on a more rectangular mesh. So let's go to new project. As a texturing and choose the Instamat create template. So after this is loaded, you can see there you have it. And don't forget to turn it off if you don't want to use it anymore as those settings are global and will transfer to your other project types. So just go to field of view and click the arrow button to reset that. And now we are back. Number two, viewing your baked mesh maps. Viewing the baked mesh maps is quite easy in Instamat. Just go to the mat library here, search for mesh select bake data, drag and drop the node onto your layer stack. Let's solo it out. Let's set the projection type to UV. Let's go back and now we can easily preview our mesh normal tangent, for example, mesh ID, curvature or AO. And if we don't need that anymore, let's just click delete and delete it. Number 3. Viewing your composite output in the 2D image viewer. So at default when we go to the 2D image viewer, you can see it's blank. And what we have to do now to view our base color, just go to the topmost layer in your layer stack, right click and choose view composite output for current channel. So there you have it, this would be our base color. But we can do even more, so for example when I want to preview a certain state, I can scroll down. Then right click on this one for example, do the same, view composite output for current channel and everything down below will be shown here. Oh, let's go a bit up, maybe a bit more. Now we have our handle and yeah, then you can just close it and continue working. Number four, using your asset texturing project in the element graph. So this is quite a powerful workflow in Instamat. You can use your asset texturing project directly in the element graph. And to do so, just go to this plus, create a new project, element graph in this case. And after this is loaded, we go to our package management and just drag and drop our asset texturing project into the graph. So as you can see, this will be a node as usual. And when I, for example, double click it, you can see we have our base color here. When I double click it again, this will be our roughness. Double click again, metalness. And I can also click those pins. So for example, I click the pin for mesh curvature. And now I can see my curvature here. And what's quite awesome about this, we could just import a different mesh, for example, and just input it into the mesh input here. And this would use our project and texture the different mesh based on our project. And for example, if I'd like to, I could just continue working on my asset like this. So for example, I could just drag the input, the output pin here, use a blend node, for example, then I don't know, maybe a spots for noise that goes into opacity. Let's set a black color and we can now improve our project further on using the element graph. Number five, exporting for Unreal Engine. So if you want to export your project specifically for Unreal Engine, it's quite easy to do so. Let's just go to the output window here, then go to this template configuration and let's go to built-in templates and select Unreal Engine. And as you could already see, we also have templates for Polyverse, RSX Engine, Unity and so on. But you could also create your own ones. But specifically for this Unreal Engine template, for example, your ambient occlusion, roughness and metalness will be merged into one color texture. Your normal map will be converted to DirectX normal map. And like this, your mesh and maps will perfectly work in Unreal Engine. And again, you can create your own template. So I just go to this plus here, call it my template, for example. And I already have one color output and grayscale output. So for example, we could create our own RRM map here by just dragging and dropping the AO channel into the red channel here, then roughness into green, metalness into blue, for example. Can also call it differently like this. But this is something for a different video, I think, so I won't go further into that. Okay, this were my five quick tips for asset texture in Instamat. And as promised, I will do a full tutorial on this axe here. So we will block out the axe in Blender, then sculpt in ZBrush and texture it in Instamat. 
But I'm currently not 100% satisfied with the results, so it will take a while. Maybe next week or so. But yeah, that's it for this video. If, if you have any questions left, just ask me in the comments and see you next time.